we've been blessed with more NBA 2K21 goodness. They just dropped part three of their gameplay blog series. And so let me break it down to you. Part one and part two was more like engine gameplay focused stuff. And part three was more like features and, and badges and builds and AI. Hey, first things first, if y'all new to the channel, what's the deal? What's the hold up? Subscribe. It's true that like 50% of people that watch this is not subscribed and that hurts my feelings. I need you guys to know that. Uh, don't be the one to hurt my feelings, man. I'm a nice guy. I haven't done anything wrong, at least on camera. <laughs> All right, let's get into it then, fellas. Why don't we? Oh, so Mike Wang has blessed us. Uh, and, and keep in mind, before we start this thing off, I want to scroll to the very bottom and let you guys know that Mike Wang did say, and I quote, We have a lot more jaw-dropping news coming soon about all the amazing stuff happening off the court that's going to blow you away. I don't really know what he means by off the court, but this does mean that this isn't the last massive bit of news that we're going to get when it comes to NBA 2K21 next gen. I, as I told you guys, and I'm going to say it again, I have incredibly high expectations for next gen, and so, with current gen, I kind of expect it to be let down. So I was on par, you feel me? But with next gen, I'm blowing my mind, Mike Wang. I'm telling you, blow my mind. So first things first, uh, you should know that there are no more pie charts. The common criticism 2K was getting over the last two years they've been doing pie charts is that it limits what you're able to create in the archetype builder. It gives you all these preset things to do and you know what I'm saying? It, it, it just felt real limiting. Uh, they recognize that it was a limit and they say that now there are restrictions based on your vitals. You can't max out everything, but there's much more control to make the exact type of player you want to be. 2K does this thing where they'll like have a feature in the game and then they'll like find a way to make it worse next year and then they'll make it the way it was before and they'll expect us to give them a standing round of applause. That's kind of what they did here removing the pie charts, but they did drop us a short little video here explaining what the build screen looks like in next gen 2K21. I mean, once you see it, you'll know why we couldn't transfer builds from current gen to next gen. It's an entirely new system. Well, not entirely new because we've had it in previous 2Ks. Uh, not, in, not exactly like this though, so I guess in that sense, it is new. Anyway, let's watch the video. I mean, as they move up the attributes in certain areas, finishing, shooting, defense, rebounding, physicals, and playmaking, as you can see here, because there's no pie charts, physicals has its own category. More Hall of Fame badges are allowed, or you know, you might be able to max this one out on gold. You can't even have access to this one unless you up your attributes. And so there's a cap on your attributes, and that basically will give you the cap on your badges. I like this system, actually. I think this system is gonna be very challenging to balance, to be honest, but if they do find a way to do it, that would make me very happy. Yeah, this looks dope, man. This, all of this looks dope. This looks dope. As long as it's balanced properly, this system looks like it will be a lot of fun. And undoubtedly will give you more options than the pie chart system ever could. There were a lot of changes also made to the takeover system and he detailed them a little bit later but I want to show this video since they have it here at the top of the article anyway. Uh, like previous years of 2k you now have a primary and a secondary takeover but unlike previous years it's not just like eight different takeovers they actually divided takeover into 24 different parts which I think is very very interesting but you can choose a primary and a secondary here and we'll get into why that's significant in a moment. Moments. But you did see some new though pull up precision ankle breaking shots negative impact limitless range These are all things that got boosts on like a shot creator takeover or a sharpshooter takeover in the past Except now you can choose them specifically, which I think is very very fascinating So they're almost giving takeover has like more of a narrow Use but in and of itself might give you like more options does that make sense? Let's talk about badges for a moment because 2K took out a bunch of badges and also added in a new bunch of badges they feel like say fit this system and this archetype builder more. Amongst the new and returning badges is the likes of Fearless Finisher, boost contact layups and decreases fatigue. Some new ones like Heat Seeker, Revived Posterizer, Rise Up, Anti-Freeze. You guys can pause the video. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down. You guys can pause the video right here uh, if you guys wanna get a detail on all this. But there's plenty of badges that they removed because they just felt like nobody was activating them or they were useless in the game. And they have a whole bunch of very interesting badges. Like this one here kinda is like, this is like my type of badge. Hold on now. Set shooter. Shooting ability gets better the longer you set and wait before pulling up. God damn it, the hash sitters are gonna be on a thousand this year. <laughs> I'm gonna have that one on Hall of Fame. Deep threes is what they call limitless range now, or I guess range extender. Damon Curry range three balls. 2K, do not disrespect Curry and put Dame in the same conversation. Come on now. 
please, please. Dame is nice, but he's not no curry. Come on now, please, please. New badges like Sniper that boost your ability to hit shots when using the pro stick. Bullet Passer gives you the ability to throw laser dots like LeBron, which I feel like should have been a badge a long time ago. So some of these badges not only are creative, but will have fun and real uses in the game. Circus threes, improved ability to hit the pull up and step back three. The circus three badge actually got a lot of attention because it has a really hilarious badge logo. And this is what it looks like. Uh, Joe knows put out a tweet saying 2K finally added a badge for all you guys. And look guys, it's, <laughs> it's a clown badge, yes. I love it, I love it 2K. And if you look carefully, there's a whole bunch of new badges for the slashers that love contact dunks and like to dunk in traffic. For, for the playmakers, there's a new badge in here somewhere that makes it harder for your ankles to be broken. Interesting. Oh yeah, right here, ankle braces. Makes it tougher for ball handlers to break your ankles. Stop and pop three for JJ Reddix who want to pull up threes in transition. That's my So uh, without a shadow of a doubt, this gets me excited. There's so many useless badges in 2K21 current gen, it makes no sense. And so it, it's kind of like a relief here. It just feels like these ones are gonna be a lot more useful. But I will say this, they said the same thing in 2K21 current gen. They removed a bunch of badges and tuned a whole bunch of badges and still there's a whole lot of useless badges. Uh, I feel like the whole badge system since they introduced signature styles, I think back in 2K13, has just every year, this has been the one area of 2K that's just been seeing improvements and improvements and improvements. There has been the off year where it was just absolute dog but I'm liking what I'm hearing here. And so 2K did list all the badges they felt like didn't fit their current, their new system, should I say, and are now removed from the game. This includes the likes of consistent finisher, contact finisher, cross key scorer, fancy footwork, fast break finisher, deep hooks, quick draw, by the way, range extender, which they've now renamed and I guess uh, they call deep threes, which is not actually the same thing because range extender was supposed to be for long twos and long threes, Deep three sounds like it's just gonna be for threes. So it doesn't, it, it might not matter. There might not be a badge to shoot those 22 foot, 21 foot jump shots anymore. 2K might have deemed that redundant. Uh, they also did a did a great job here for all the designers in the community because they provided a whole bunch of uh, high quality close ups of these new badges. Uh, and they look good, I'm not gonna lie. The designs look crisp, they look good, they're easily identifiable. And so this is where we get to the takeover part because a lot has changed here. 2K says, instead of limiting players to eight general archetype-based takeovers, we've broken those into 24 more specific takeover abilities. In a way, you can think of them as unique badges that you can fire off when you get hot. Oh my God. That was on some scary mo- What the f Here's your phone back. Okay, all right. So these are all things that in the past would get boosts if you had like a shot credit or a, a defensive lockdown or a re like if you had takeover, these will all light up. But now you can only choose a primary and a secondary of one of these 24, which you might be like, but what if I don't like it and I wanna change it? 2K has thought about that and in probably one of the most creative and heartwarming ways I could have imagined they implement something like this in the game. We wanted to honor our late friend Kobe Bryant who tragically lost way too early this year. When you've earned all your badge points, you'll receive the Mamba Mentality Badge which allows you to change takeovers whenever you want. So just like Kobe, you can vary and choose from takeover from game to game, which is the most beautiful thing ever. Now, Ronnie, Sir Caps a lot, has capped about our ability to do this in the past, but I swear, bro, if y'all cap on Kobe Bryant's name, we're gonna have a very serious problem. So for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna assume that this feature is now in the game. Uh, they also did mention, I believe this, it worked like this, I believe it was in 2K19. I don't remember which year it was, but it, you get a primary takeover, you can continue to build your takeover meter so you get a primary and secondary takeover, but then you can wait and risk continuing to build your takeover to get full team takeover. That comes at a risk though, because at any point if you turn the ball over or you foul or you do a bad play, you could lose meter on your takeover. They do have badges, um, the new badges they added to the game to help boost the amount of takeover you get and to help uh, nullify the takeover you lose when you make bad plays as well. So it, it almost feels like a whole system in and of itself. And it's probably the most intuitive way I've ever seen them plan this whole takeover thing, ever, since the introduction of the Grand Badge in 2K17. They then got to talking about AI, and yep, AI is usually the area in the game that sees improvements every single year. Um, at least like, 
mechanically, but in actual practice, it has been frustrating to play against the AI in my career when they sprint to double team you or, or, or when you drop like five points in a game or like when your corner shooter decides to cut even though you never asked him to do that and he has a 95 three ball, so why would he? Let me break down the highlights of what they said about the AI. They mentioned that both on ball and off ball screen logic has been rewritten and auto switching logic was refined to reduce bad switches. That's good. They talk a lot about this new system and engine they have called the adaptive coach engine that has the ability to recognize and adapt to different types of off-ball actions, including flare screens, down screens, back screens, and handoffs. That's good, that's really good. Improve logic for CPU defenders to get in position to take charges on some Kyle Lowry. Yes, sir, okay. They mentioned a whole bunch of improvements to transition defense. And probably one of the most interesting things to me personally is now you can use the L1 or LB button to call for help defense instead of just calling for a double team. You ever like just sit there and you're like, huh, how come that wasn't in the game sooner? That's one of those features right there. Now it's on the defensive side of the ball. They actually have like a whole list of stuff on the offensive side too. The reason I don't want to get too gassed about none of these AI improvements is because they always sound great on paper, but in practice, they can be an absolute disaster and misery. They mentioned uh, for the offensive side, their ace engine, their adaptive coaching engine or whatever they called it, can naturally select the best scorer on the team and only run scoring actions for them. Hmm. It just seems like in general, bro, when you play against AI, they're gonna be smarter. I, I hope that's a good thing. And you know what I'm saying? When you're playing 5v5 on a my team, when you're playing on a my career, people are just making smarter, more human-like decisions. You expect those improvements year to year. But then again, I don't think, like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not in that world anymore and I don't be playing those modes that much. But some stuff like this just like, how, how is it 2020 we just fixed AI players accidentally positioning themselves out of bounds? I refuse to get excited about these AI improvements personally, but they did drop a video showing off the new pick and roll offense. And it's probably just gonna be a pick and roll. We see here, Anthony Davis sets a pick and roll. LeBron James drives right. Actually, if let's analyze this for no reason other than the fact that we can. Look, 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 look. Screen gets hit. And this bozo is sprinting towards the screen. What's up with that? LeBron is being left open because he doesn't want to show up and play hell defense. Why was this the clip they just showed? I don't understand why they chose that clip of all clips to, to prove AI's intelligence. Now, it could be very possible that the way that person set up their, their team was they wanted him to like ice or hedge the screen, so that's why he ran up. But if you wanted to show smart plays, I'm not gonna lie, you just did the opposite of that. <laughs> I don't, what was I supposed to pick up? I don't understand. The only thing that this quick little video here taught me is the stuff from the second notes, which by the way, I'm gonna link in the description, there's gonna be an end screen. Part two, where they talked a lot about the improvements made to the gameplay, you could see just how more real the screens feel this year. And they're not so like magnetic in that like you're forced to be stuck onto it. And they're not, you see, they're not, hey, that's all I took from this personally. Uh, but you do see Bam sprinting over to play help on the weak side. So that's, that's there. That was it for the blog post though, ladies and gentlemen. 2K. I don't like that you guys are doing blog posts. Personally, for me, well, I like it personally, but I don't think it's gonna work though, long term. Because people either watch videos like this one and subscribe to the channel, or they just wait on Twitter to see like Joe knows tweet about the clown badge and they go, huh, there's a clown badge in the game. So they only leave with like five or six tidbits of the information, even though there was way more here in this blog post. Hey, drop a video or something. I know it's more work and this might just be easier, but like a video, we watch videos, we can react to videos. Videos are easy to watch, easy to consume. Anyway, besides the point, this was the least interesting of all the, the blog posts that they've done so far in my opinion. Maybe it's just because I get excited by the gameplay stuff. So that part two was getting me gassed. This one was cool in that like takeover seems like it's gonna be cool this year and the badges feel like they're gonna work better this year. That's about it. Hey, y'all new to the channel, man. You haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Right here on the screen is part two. This is the, this is the, the notes that got me real, real excited. So if you missed it, make sure to catch up. Uh, and right here is me playing on a legend build on NBA 2K21 current gen. So I watch one of the two. If you don't watch either, well, then I'm going to see you on the homepage, hopefully, at some point. Later. Peace.